Hey guys, so this is going to be part two of my pumping um, video series. And so this is going to be basically my views, where they come from, and, and how my interpretation of the data has formed my views, and how I have formed permanent results from using my penis pump over the past 20 months of active PE. And so let's break it down, okay? So to start, there is this debate going on between clamping and pumping. And, you know, a lot of the PE vet says clamping is the only thing that works and pumping doesn't work. That argument is fundamentally flawed because they are both using pressure to expand the tunica and get basically a super physiological erection to expand the chambers and expand them permanently. The difference is that clamping uses internal pressure by using an obstruction causing a low flow priapism, whereas pumping causes increased arterial blood into the chambers of the penis to cause that same expansion, causing a high flow priapism. High flow priapism is inherently safer because you have that increased arterial supply. Clamping, you are constricting the blood flow, you are constricting that arterial blood supply, and you are therefore causing ischemic changes if you clamp for too long, okay? There's a separate video of whether clamping can actually help with erection quality because of some of the signals that it releases in the setting of ischemia, but in general, it is much higher risk exercise. I have kind of argued back and forth with some of the, the, the PE greats, if you will, about this next point, but I think that pumping is inherently safer on your pelvic floor. I don't know of any of my clients that have actually developed hard flaccid as a result of pelvic floor dysfunction. They have developed it from pumping, but it's from increasing the pressure too dramatically too quickly. Pumping inserts a negative pressure on the pelvic floor, but there is no obstruction in place. When you clamp, you obstruct the, vas the vessels in that way, and so both the arterial and venous blood supply. And so when you are constricting, let's say you accidentally kegel while you're clamping and you are kegeling and your pelvic floor muscles are trying to push that blood up into your penis, there's nowhere to get for it for go to go because it is constricted. And so as a result, you can get pelvic floor dysfunction or strain your muscles because there is nowhere for that pressure to go when you constrict. When you are pumping, there is no obstruction there. And so if you kegel and you try to push more blood into the penis, you know, I still do not recommend that, but there's you're not meeting an obstruction. So I think the risk of pelvic floor dysfunction is much lower. I've been pumping for very long times at very high pressures, which I'm reluctant to admit, and I never had any sort of pelvic floor issues until I tried clamping. Okay. Now keep in mind, I was a dumbass and I didn't realize that I was even kegling when I was kegling, um, but it was because I was kegling when I was clamping. But that brings up my next point is I think that pumping is like the infomercial says, you just set it and forget it. You know, you put it on your dick, you pump up to a pressure, whereas clamping, maybe I'm just a fucking dumbass, but like, it's hard for me to clamp. It is really hard for me to get what I would call a good clamping session. I think it's much harder to get right. There's much more nuance about it. And it's hard for me to even like, keep enough blood flow in the chamber. Once again, I'm not going to belabor the point, but I think pumping is much easier to get right. There's less pressure on your pelvic floor. And though you do create negative pressure in your chamber, it's not like that negative pressure translates all the way down into your pelvic floor. It's contained into the corpora. If you saw my last pumping video, when you actually expand the balloon, when you put your dick in the pump, it expands and it creates that vacuum chamber. And so the blood is being pulled into the actual chambers of the penis, the actual corpus cavernosum and corpus spongiosum. The pelvic floor pressure does not go down into your pelvic floor and exert force on like your bumbospongiosum or your, you know, ischiocavernosus muscle. And so pelvic floor safety, I think pumping is a hundred times safer than, than clamping. Okay. But I just wanted to go on that little mini tangent first. And so I'm going to talk about my experience with pumping and where I found my success. And so the first thing is going in hard. And so when you are pumping, in order to get permanent growth, you have to basically take your normally expanded penis and you have to pump it past those limits and expand that tunica. Okay. So if you are going in flaccid, which is fine to do, especially when you're starting out, but you're using that negative pressure to expand and gradually draw in blood to the point where you get an erection and then then you have to expand past that point in order to actually get growth. So if you put it in the pump for five minutes and it takes you three minutes to actually draw that blood in there, and then you're only getting two minutes of actually additional negative pressure over that chamber to actually enlarge your penis at that point. So I think it's going to be much harder for you to get permanent results if you're just pumping flaccid. Now, you will get major flaccid results for sure. But the other thing is that you are at a very high risk of having much more edema 
edema into the penis, there's an outdated term that we call in the medical field third spacing, which is basically the soft tissue that is not part of your vasculature where you can have edema develop, okay? When you go in flaccid, there's much more soft tissue, there's much more that room in between your, your deflated corpora and your skin for you to start drawing in edema into that area. When you go in hard, your corpora are taut, and so there's a tightness between your skin and your corpora. So if you pull it, it goes right back down, and there's there's much less room to third space, if you will. So you're going to have much lower rates of edema if you go in with an erect penis. That is part of the reason why I recommend that you go in erect. So another thing to keep in mind is that when you have pressures in the penis, there's an equilibrium that is reached. And so, you know, you squeeze your pump a few times and it says you're up to five HGs or whatever. Once your blood starts coming into the chambers, that pressure is actually going to relatively decrease because you're reaching a new homeostasis when that blood is coming into the chambers of your penis. And so when you were using something like a bath mate, for example, where you were compressing the bellows, um, you will see that as your penis gets harder and harder inside the chamber, the bellows were compressed and then they will start decompressing like that. And so the actual force of pressure in that vacuum is not the same. Especially if you're going in flaccid, you're going to have to be more consistently pumping up your, you know, the chamber in order to get that negative pressure on there. I just recommended that you're hard when you go in, okay? And so how do I stay hard, <laughs> you know, during pumping? God, Lee, that's, this is kind of embarrassing, but whatever. I don't know how many people are even going to see this shit. But I personally watch homemade videos. I think porn can be damaging. You have to be very careful, especially if you're using porn when you're pumping every day. But I use a, a mixture of basically looking at my significant other that I personally think is the sexiest motherfucker on the whole planet. And then when I'm in between my sets, I do some massaging and basically masturbating to keep maximum stimulation and erection. I get this question asked a lot. When you are taking your penis outside of the pump, so you, you know, you've done your session, it looks like you're real hard in there and you take off the pump and you look like you lose your erection and that is normal to go from what looks like 100% pumping inside the pump to drop down to about you know what looks like 75 80% when you take the pump off that is normal how do I do my timing well I think there's a hard stop for me at 10 minutes I will never exceed 10 minutes and I try to limit my sets to about five to seven minutes with about two to three minutes in between my sets and so for my personal routine I do my stretching first then I basically go in flaccid and use just a five minute warm-up set where I'm just increasing the blood into the chamber increase my pressure getting used to it warming up and then I do about three sets of seven minutes the first set I do about 85% pressure the second set 90% pressure and then the third set really I go to the highest pressure I can tolerate which is typically about 95% I try not to ever max out like 100% I can't get any water out I personally use a hydro pump I don't even want to say the name because I don't want to give them any props and I don't necessarily love their product but when you limit your set time you're limiting the amount of edema and you're limiting the amount of discoloration and just to be clear edema is swelling okay how do I do it I, I pump six to seven days a week okay I only take a rest day when my schedule forces me to I'm just too fucking busy I have to go into work early we have an early meeting whatever it might be and so I try to use my rest days for that when you're pumping you're using arterial blood it's healthy I personally don't believe as much of like an injury response meaning you stretch out the tunica and then you need the rest day because there's cellular proliferation yes there is some of that that occurs but I think it's more so a dilation is the main process that occurs I personally don't believe that you need to have that rest day in between. And I think that if you pump every other day, it's not going to be enough to actually get you permanent gains, at least as quickly. Like what supplements, what medicines do I use when I pump? Well, I always want to get the hardest possible fucking erection I can because I want to go in hard and use every ounce of negative pressure to actually expand my corpora and, and actually dilate it and get growth. I use about 2.5 milligrams of Cialis usually every day to every other day to get in my system. It helps. I'm going to make a whole video on why Cialis is beneficial, but it helps with your overall penis health, minimizes risk of erectile dysfunction long-term, and gives me hard erections in the pump. And the other thing I do is I use one scoop of my uh, Leviathan supplement, um, the Vigor, which is our NO booster. It's a citrulline-based product, which me and BD developed. It's based on science. For those of you that think it's inappropriate for me to plug my own supplement that I make in my videos, well, fuck you, go watch another video. I mean, I don't mean that. I love your support. I don't mean that, guys. It's just that, yeah, of course I'm gonna plug my supplement. It's a great product. It's gonna be on the market uh, very soon. It's already in production so you can go pre-order now. And so um, the other reason why I use these supplements
supplements is because of the PDE5 inhibitors like Cialis can actually be synergistic with pumping. If you haven't seen my other pumping video, watch that video. You can actually develop an improved baseline erection by using pumping combined with Viagra. The other thing is PDE5 inhibitors actually help to relax smooth muscle. So in certain children's lymphatic conditions, they actually treat it with high doses of Viagra and it relieves the lymphatic stress. And so if you're prone to lymphatic issues like I am, it'll actually help minimize and prevent things like lymphocytes and lymphangiosclerosis. I'm going to make a whole video on why I recommend PDE5 inhibitors, but that's why I do that. So what pump do I use? Well, I use a Hydromax Extreme, Hydromax Extreme with a hand pump. It's what I started with. I saw Derek's video on Bathmate and I first had the one that you just put on your pelvis and like pump the water out and it's stupid as fuck. And so I still have that it's just sitting in a box, but then I immediately switched to the hand pump and I haven't turned back since. I do think it's better that you can get a, a pump um, like a Mustang or a Lay Love where you can have a hand pump and a gauge. It's much safer in general, but the hand pump is key. But once again, when you are pressing that pump into your pelvis, that's right where the nerves exit, where you have your suspensor ligament of the penis, where you have even some of your vasculature that comes out in that area and you can damage it if you're pressing back into your pelvis with too much pressure. That is the regular standard bath mate is just a terrible fucking design, but it is what it is. So if you're gonna use a bath mate, get the Hydromac Extreme, but I would say save your money and get just a high quality pump. And if you want a water pump, just get a water trap with that, which brings up our next point, water versus air. So you have to understand that air can compress, okay? Water cannot compress based on the molecular structure. And so with a water pump, when you pump, you have an immediate change in your pressure equal to the amount of pressure that you basically pump out. And so you have to be careful with water pumps because if you're air pumping and you pump up quickly, there is a little bit of a buffer. The air can compress and it can give it time to expand and kind of formulate. Water pump, immediate pressure change. And that's how guys hurt themselves with the bath mate. They throw in the bath mates on their dick, squeeze down, eject all that water, immediate pressure change. They feel it'll pop, don't get hard again, okay? I've coached, unfortunately, several guys doing it that way. So just be very careful if you're gonna use a water pump. You know, if you're interested in learning more about water pressures, I am not a fucking engineer, um, and I hope nobody watching this is like cringing when I'm mentioning these things, but check out Pascal's principle when it comes to water pumping. And then also just look at like hydro how hydraulics work, hydraulic pressure works. It's based on similar principles as far as water not being compressible. Water also, because it doesn't compress, it forms a more uniform pressure over your dick. And so water, certain areas can compress in certain ways depending on the shape of the pump when you have an air pump I don't know what I just said but with water it's going to be a uniform pressure all over your dick and so I think that that is much better and I think water is just far superior and I personally think that's responsible for my permanent gains that I've seen get a good air pump with the gauge get a water trap boom high quality water pump right there there is no bathmate affiliate links here and no love loss for bathmate uh, I don't get along with the mods on that sub anyways but anyways I do think that going along with that heat is key. There's been several posts going or subreddit read about it, but basically heat can help with elasticity of the tissue, help get you additional stress, help minimize risk of injuries. When I pump, I use hot water. And so I use both the benefits of the water and the heat. If you are going to air pump, I do recommend you use something like a heat wrap around it to heat the cylinder so you can get the benefits from heat. So how do I pump? What's my routine? Well, I stretch for about 15 to 30 minutes beforehand. I think that this helps do what we call prime the tunica. Either way, I just want to stretch because I'm more key on length and girth at this point. I basically, I go into my shower, I strip down nude. I do not let the water go all over me. I just let the water run, okay? Once the water is warm enough, I put my tube under the water, then I cut off the water, I step in and I put on my pump. I use my air, the, the hand pump to basically pump out the pressure. And then I basically sit there until my session is done and then uh, just repeat that process. And so I'm not doing it actively in the shower. I'm not wasting a bunch of water. And it's also less kind of conspicuous that I don't have like a shower running for 20 minutes, okay? What are some misconceptions? Well, I kind of addressed it early in this video, but one of the misconceptions is that my personal opinion here, guys, okay, my research, I could be wrong here. So, you know, don't, I mean, I'm, I welcome a discussion, but I think tunica strengthening is, is not a sound medical idea. I mean, in theory, I get where it comes from, but the thought that if you pump with high pressures, you're going to actually strengthen your tunica over time. It's just, it's just not medically sound or else we wouldn't have things like aortic aneurysms where you actually
actually have the tunica intima of the aorta that dilates chronically over time due to the pressure of the heart pumping out, basically. And so I think that that's disproven. And also with megalophallus, you see a chronic dilation of the tunica, which leads to that abnormal enlargement of the penis based on priapismic episodes from sickle cell disease. So I don't think that is sound. I, I think that that's kind of bogus. I also don't think that you need to take a break every day in between. I think you can pump every day and do it safely because it's that high flow priapism you're bringing in that arterial blood. And I don't think that the injury response is as big of a component of PE as people like to make it out to be. Could be wrong here, guys. I mean, so that's just my personal approach. Do your own research, form your own fucking conclusions. And then don't wear a cock ring afterwards. And BD is probably like punching the air when I say this because uh, we, we disagree hard on this. And so if you are doing something like, so let's just go with pumping, okay? In general, pumping, you're already putting pressure on your lymphatic system and you're bringing in extra fluid into those lymphatic channels. Hence why you get something like a lymphocele or lymphangiosclerosis. If you are putting on a cock ring afterwards, you are further obstructing those lymphatic channels. You are making yourself prone to lymphatic issues. Lymphangiosclerosis, lymphocele that way. The other thing is that, so when you pump, the second you release that negative pressure, you are going to start losing blood out of your penis. And so when you put on a cock ring, the only thing that's going to do is trap some blood in the corpora, but you're mostly trapping some of the edema because you're not relieving that obstruction. You're obstructing the veins, which is going to further lead to more edema. And so you have this false enlargement. It's like pseudo enlargement. Yes, your dick will be bigger, but it's because of venous obstruction obstruction and lymphatic obstruction, not because your actual corpora, which is what you want when you get hard to be bigger, that's not getting bigger. And so you're just increasing your risk of lymphatic channels and then you're throwing in an ischemic injury on top of that. So if you throw in your cock ring, you know, whatever, 30 minutes is the magic number, but I still, I just, I don't see any benefit. And, you know, I, sorry, BD, I love you, man. You know, you're my brother slash business partner, but I just don't think that is sound. And, you know, we can have a healthy debate because that's what it's about. This is like one of the more controversial things, but you need high pressure for gains. I'm sorry, uh, you know, I, I know that the, the guide on, on getting bigger says that you need five to seven inches of mercury. I think you need much more than that. I think you need at least closer to 10, because as I mentioned in the last paper, you can see physiologic erections in some cases that can go up to basically nine inches of mercury. And so you want to be able to push past that. I use the Hydromax Extreme max of 14 inches of mercury. That's a fuck ton of pressure, okay? You have to be very careful and you have to build up to it. I have seen guys that put on a pump and they're like, dude, I'm pumping at three inches of mercury and it's, it's too much for me to tolerate. I don't know what to tell you on that. Maybe the pump is wrong or you're just very sensitive to pressure. And so I don't recommend you just start at a high pressure. I have built up over almost two Two years of doing this PE. And so it is a, that is a lot of pressure that I use, which is probably somewhere around, you know, at max, maybe like 12, 12 to 13 inches of mercury. It's a lot, but I think that that is part of the reason why I've had gains. And so I think there's a curve in PE in general, basically the higher your risk, the higher your reward. Okay. For the most part, there's some things like side to side stretches where it's just risk with no additional benefit. And there's a peak, it does plateau at the top, but I think that if you really want permanent gains, you know, you just doing the safest shit possible, you will get gains, but I think that they will be limited. So you have to figure out what's worth it to yourself, okay? But I just don't think that pumping at the lower pressures is gonna be that good on causing you permanent erections, okay? So my final thoughts, guys, okay? I think that pumping is an amazing exercise of PE, and if anybody were to ask me, which they don't because I'm not a PE coach and I haven't been doing this that long, whatever the fuck you wanna say, I think pumping is key. You can pump at low pressures to improve your erection quality. Um, you can pump at low pressures to help with with injury recovery, or you could pump with high pressures to, to actually enlarge the penis. You can have a more narrow tube and pump for length. You can have a wider tube and pump for girth. And so I just think it's the most most versatile type of PE that we have. And, you know, as I've demonstrated in the megalophallus post, it's about chronic exposure to pressures and chronic dilation, like when you have megalophallus induced by multiple priapismic episodes, okay? Do I think clamping is more effective? Yeah. I do. I think it's more effective for girth. I'm not going to lie. I think clamping is also harder to get right. So it is just what works better for you. You know, full disclosure, I am throwing in a little bit of clamping at the end of some of my sessions when I have time. It's a modified soft clamp, not a hard clamp. I'll never do that shit again. Some of the secrets to my success, going in hard, using at least five to seven minutes under a higher pressure, using warm water, and I think doing stretching first. I think those are the key things why I have had permanent gains and many others have not, I guess. You have to balance the risk and reward 
reward. I just think that there's a lot of advantages of pumping, especially when you combine it with something like a PDE5 inhibitor. And you know, you can really help your overall penis health when doing pumping the correct way. So even if you're doing just some light pumping at the end of your PE workout as a cool down, I think it would be beneficial and I highly recommend anybody cons concerned about their penis to check it out. So it's just my opinion, guys. There's a lot of guys way smarter than I am that have been doing this for a lot longer. So please do not just blindly listen to what I say. Do your own research and form your own conclusions. It's not a fucking catchphrase. I sincerely mean that. I don't want anybody being, oh, Hink said it, so I'm gonna do it. Like I've read the data. I've had my interpretations. You need to do the same to figure out what's best with you. Ultimately, it's your dick, your life. Please consider um, supporting us with LeviathanSubs.com. We have that vigor if you want a high quality citrulline-based formula. If you have any injury coaching that you might need or just my take on your PE routine, you can find me on my Patreon for direct messaging and even phone calls. And then, of course, uh, check me out on my Reddit page for all of the uh, print links to you know all these posts that I make. And so uh, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.